here we go again. Is it an IPO window and what does it look like? Look, we definitely have a window and I think we're in a critical window because we've had two plus years of this market being closed. I think there's a lot of people actually would like to see a functioning IPO market. We've got a good pipeline. All the other preconditions, stock markets at highs, low volatility are there. So really it's time to execute. What do we read in about the companies that are looking to IPO? It looks like there's a little bit of retail, there's some social media, private equity as well. It's fairly broad based. Sorry, can I just jump in as well? Those Golden Goose trainers. I'd never heard of Golden Goose before you guys are talking about You've got to shop with the mums. We all I know found about Golden the, Goose. The, the <laughs> fancy Penstar Lab floral print with black star, woman size 36. It's probably too big for you. £685. Yeah. So I think the question that Karen <laughs> yeah, was, was I, asking... I didn't um, get beyond Golden Goose, that's all. Exactly. But I think, look, we have a much more diversified pipeline than we've seen before. We came off a, a market in 2021, the previous high, that was very much technology-driven. Um, and so I think this time round, it's much more dispersed. That's representative also, Karen, of what we're seeing in the secondary market at the moment. And really, um, we're also seeing investors looking for high-quality larger companies so that liquidity in the aftermarket is better than we've seen in the past. There's another theme underplaying these markets and that's the records we've seen recently in the United States and if you're uh, sitting on a company that could be a potential listing in the States you're thinking about taking it to that market again. Yeah. Equally we've seen the opposite, uh, Sheen a really good example of that where there are discussions as to whether it would be better suited over this side of the world. So. How is Europe faring at this point yeah. in the IPO cycle? I, I think it's interesting. In, in this particular point, Europe's pipeline is bigger than we're seeing in the US and Asia. Realistically, to have a sustainable IPO market, we need to see the US, the biggest capital market in the world, open with lots of issues coming through. But as we stand at the moment, we're seeing investors really looking for good quality companies and being pretty agnostic as to which region they're coming from. Um, I don't mean to... Um be anti-European or anti-British about this, but why? just to explain to us why you would um, IPO in Europe rather than the United States, yeah. given the choice. We know there's a deeper pool of liquidity, we yeah. know there are more investors, we know you're going to get a high valuation, so why wouldn't you IPO in the yeah. US? I, think I, I challenge the last point. I think if you look at the facts, actually um, investors are pretty agnostic with regards to valuation, and we've got lots of good examples of UK listings or European listings which are trading at or a premium to their US peers. So I think that's the first point. Secondly, you can go back to first principles, you know, where's management based, where are the revenues of the company based, and most importantly, where's the brand most recognized? They're all good reasons for a home market listing. We've done a lot of analysis of the companies that are non-US companies that perhaps went to the US in the 2021 cycle and perhaps haven't had the best aftermarket because they're not index relevant and almost become zombie stocks in, in that market. So I think there's a lot of actually... It's absolutely fascinating. And it's a massive caveat for the... Is that part of the pitch when you do try to get them to IPO? I'm, yeah. I'm serious. It's like, because there is a massive assumption with most of us out there, most of you and us, that the US will get a premium valuation. You're yeah. saying that's nonsense. No, I'm not saying it's not. I'm saying the, the facts don't hold out. Actually, there's well, plenty of very yeah. good examples. You look at Adian, you look at Avast, for example, i.e. best-in-class companies yeah. have listed in Europe and have then traded, as I say, very healthily from a valuation perspective. I think what we saw was a distortion in 21 when technology was really the game in town mm. um, and the US is the home for technology historically. But I think to Karen earlier point as we've now diversified the pipeline with consumer industrials and more traditional companies I think actually non-US listing menus are very attractive.